Interesting thoughts coming out of Elliot Friedman and the Jeff Merrick show going over the Montreal Canadiens and what they could potentially do when it comes to improving their roster for next season. We're going over onto the Jeff Merrick show and highlighting a little discussion they had when it comes to Tyson Berry, an Oilers defenseman and a player who does have a few more years left in his contract, but as we get further into the discussion, we'll highlight where exactly everything lies. This is what Friedman said on the Jeff Merrick show talking about Tyson Berry. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in his particular case. Merrick said, we wonder about Seattle. We can also maybe wonder about Montreal there with that player if they decide to move away from Tyson Berry. Now, the sentence isn't the most well-written or well-constructed sentence in the world. He's saying, if the Oilers decide to move away from Barry, we could see Montreal or Seattle also be a part of that conversation. But I'm only focusing on Montreal here, mostly because things are a little bit more interesting on that front, in my opinion. Now, Tyson Berry, as we've noted, 30 years old from Victoria, BC, Canada. He's 5'11", 196 as a right-handed defenseman, making $4.5 million a year until the end of the 2024 season. This contract that he signed started off in 2021-2022, but there have indeed been a few other contracts that have gone through and served him well. Let's go over those right here. In 2016-17, he started out a $5.5 million year with the Colorado Avalanche. He did not finish that contract on the Avalanche. He finished it in Toronto. Toronto, getting traded over there before the start of the fourth and final year of the deal. Barry said in an interview, jokingly, I feel, that Kale McCarr's emergence in Colorado kind of had him fearing for his career there because he was like, oh, this guy's really good and he plays the same role that I do. Are the Avalanche really going to stick it out with me long term when they have this Kale guy coming in here and just being an absolute monster? Barry maxed out with two near 60-point years in the Colorado system before going over to Toronto, where he had 39 points in 70 games to wrap up his contract. He didn't do all too well in the postseason, getting zero points in that five-game sample against the Columbus Blue Jackets, and eventually he signed a one-year deal with the Oilers. Now, I think it was documented that the reason he even came to Edmonton, especially at a lower cap hit, $3.75 million in the first year, was because Connor McDavid hit him up and he was like, yeah, I want to play with you. You want to come over here, right? Play with me, play with Dry Sidle, play with two of the best players in the world. And Barry bit. He signed a one year deal, 3.75, as we said. He was pretty all right. He was the number one point scorer amongst all defensemen in 2020, 2021. And then this season, he re signed for that 4.5 million AAV deal by three years. Now, when it comes to the future for Tyson Barry, you could say that there's somewhat of a similar thing going on with this Oilers squad than there had been with the Colorado Avalanche. We had talked about the emergence of Kale McCarr and how he might shove Barry down the depth chart a little bit, therefore making him expendable, which he was, which is why he got traded to Toronto. But when it comes to the Oilers, you could debate the same thing is happening with Evan Bouchard. Now, this is not a new idea. We had made this video before already, talking about how Bouchard and his emergence on the Oilers as a right-handed defenseman who is offensively capable with a big bomb of a slap shot could if he develops properly, become somewhat of a danger zone for Tyson Berry because it means that all of a sudden his services are no longer needed because Berry is pretty much that primary power play quarterback right-handed defenseman option who doesn't really do all too much else when he's not producing points. So now it's being brought up on The Jeff Merrick Show that if the Oilers decide, hey, $4.5 million is pretty steep and we could trade Barry and get some assets in return, why not explore that avenue? The Montreal Canadiens are all of a sudden thrown into that conversation. Now, I'd seen some people going out there and saying, hey, if Barry gets traded from Edmonton to Montreal, is it a Jeff Petrie maybe that wants to go back or that the Oilers see interest in because he was a former Oiler and he's actually a lot better now than he had been when he was on that Oiler squad before? But when it comes to Petrie, I don't want to think that he is the main guy coming back, mostly because on Petrie's contract, there is limited trade protection. He does have a modified no trade clause and a full no move clause for this season. And if he's going to get traded, I really do feel like Petrie would get sent over to a team in the States, mostly due to family reasons and 
wanting to be closer to them. Not necessarily Edmonton. I don't think that would be the destination he would desire more. And besides, when it comes to being closer to his family, Montreal is literally closer to Michigan than Edmonton is, so I don't really know if that is the destination he would want to go to, and he ultimately does have control, so that's likely not the scenario I think is going to happen. But when it comes to Tyson Berry coming over to the Montreal Canadiens, you talk about the right-handed defenseman depth that we have seen. We made a video earlier in the month, ta or not the month, it was last month actually, my goodness, it was in May, Talking about some right-handed defenseman candidates, we talked about Jan Ruda, we talked about Anton Strauman, because with the departure of Weber, with Savard on the team, with Petrie potentially going out, we don't really know how solidified this Canadian's right-handed defense core is. It's why the re-signing of Chris Weidman was a move that I was a pretty big fan of, because hey, if you limit the sample to what Weidman did at the end of the season and you only focus on the St. Louis days, hey, Chris Weidman actually had a pretty good season, all things considered. And if Tyson Berry is a guy coming over to Montreal, there you go. Oh, there's that power play one, power play two, right-handed defenseman quarterback combo. Plus, I mean, if you want to go out there and say that the goal for next season is just to score more gosh darn goals, get Cole Caulfield his 40 goals, get Nick Suzuki, I don't know, 40 assists on the year, make sure Josh Anderson scores 25, I want to see all these guys go out there and actually produce, then hey, Tyson Berry on your power play, definitely going to help you out in that respect. Plus, Chris Weidman and his overall profile is good enough for power play too. So, there definitely would be a good incentive, I think, for the Montreal Canadiens to acquire a player like Tyson Berry, plus the fact that he is 5'11", so there's a lot of familiarity there for the Canadiens and smaller players, especially with Martin St. Louis as the coach, of course, right? So, I don't know. It's an interesting idea. Obviously, Montreal is just one team that's being mentioned here. Seattle is the other, and we could have an entire conversation about what Barry could provide to the Seattle Kraken, but when it comes to the Montreal trade scenario, I kind of wonder what exactly would it be that the Oilers would want in return for a Barry? Because, as we've noted, this guy is valuable. Like, he's not a bum at the NHL level. It's just, when it comes to the Oilers and what they have, you could debate that his services are not really needed anymore because he's primarily a number one power play guy. But if Bouchard is that guy now, there's no real incentive to keep around a $4.5 million dude that's going to be playing second line minutes and not really being given the best opportunities. You could probably use the money and the assets elsewhere, especially if you trade away Barry for a good return. So... Is there a prospect or two, maybe a roster replacement player that you think would suffice in a Barry trade? Is the price even really that high? I don't know. Last time he was traded, it was in a big scenario with Kerfoot and Callie Rosen and Nazem Kadri. And I mean, Nazem Kadri is an absolute monster now. The guy scored at a 100-point pace for the Colorado Avalanche. So I don't really think that comparing the previous Barry trade to now would be all too fair. But either way, for the Montreal Canadiens, this could be an interesting move that I could understand if they actually had the assets to go ahead and do, because, I mean, look, we've talked about the Canadiens and their prospect core for years. They've got a lot of young defensemen. You could talk about Alexander Romanov, you could talk about Norlander, you can talk about Struble, you could talk about Jordan Harris, Caden Gooley, Logan Mayu, etc. There are a lot of guys on this prospect system that could break in as a defenseman in the next few years. Tyson Berry's 30 years old, so it's not like the guy's a dinosaur. He'll, at the very least have, I think, three or four years left in the National Hockey League, and assuming that he's able to produce at least 40 points in those seasons, I think he'll be fine when it comes to his value as an NHL player. So, is there a prospect that the Canadians have in their defensive pipeline, for example, that you would be interested in trading away for a Tyson Berry? Because you gotta remember, if all of Norlander and Harris and Struble and all these guys hit their ceilings, you're not gonna have enough room for all of them. So, tell me in the comments all your thoughts about the Canadians potentially trading for Tyson Berry should the Oilers decide he is somebody they want to move on from. If you're an Oilers fan, what is it that you want in a potential Tyson Berry trade from the Montreal Canadiens if you do trade this guy away? And furthermore, is the Tyson Berry trade conversation even one that you want to be having? Do you say, screw it, we can have Bouchard and Berry? We don't need to get rid of one of them because there's somebody else who is younger who can play a similar role. I only bring that up because we actually did talk about it on the channel before, so it is a point of contention in my mind. But either way, talk in the comments all your thoughts about this Barry to Montreal idea. We might make another video talking about the Tyson Barry Seattle Kraken rumors, but 
I don't know. I don't want to make an entire other Tyson Berry video and repeat myself for the same time in short succession. We might wait a little bit to make another video about that. But either way, talk to the comments about your thoughts about this one. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Rolls 9 And bye.